Uh, Kyle Irving is with the Sporting News, and he's got a much better life than us because he's in Lipstick City, living large in Santa Monica, styling. And he left that wretched, smelly city of Boston uh, to go to Los Angeles. Uh, and he left all of his fandom with his family back home so that he could form new relationships with not only West Coast women, but West Coast teams. And he's covering the uh, USA Basketball Olympics uh, with us and all of the uh, tournament games are going to be fantastic. Kyle, good to see you. Um, I want to say we were talking earlier about Durant's calf, right? And the argument was that um, he won't play Sunday against Serbia. And then I wasn't arguing about whether he would play. I could give a rat's ass if he plays or not. I've, I've been around Kevin uh, in Brooklyn forever. And, you know, what he was in Brooklyn was always sitting with his bad calves and never playing. So that's what I remember, the guy that never played and never won. So uh, that's what we got here in New York, that that version of Katie. I will say I have like 12 pairs of his shoes. I like his shoes. Anyway, uh, so my argument was that he's played two straight scrimmages, two straight full practices. He's been on the floor. I just saw him dunking and running reverse dunks and like you know afterwards i heard it right out of his mouth if it, if the game were tomorrow i could play no problem uh but i want to see how i feel here after this second scrimmage and why would they not play him if he's capable of playing what are they saving him for what <laughs> saving him for what like it, do you think he'll go if he's okay to go Load management, even taking over the Olympics. It's incredible. But um, no, I mean, if he's ready to go and he believes he's ready to go, I don't know why he wouldn't go. It's not like this is a player who, you know, let's say it was Joel Embiid who was out with an injury and you have to change so much of what you do if Joel Embiid is all of a sudden the guy that you're implementing in your lineup. I don't think it's that hard to implement Kevin Durant into this lineup. I mean, the guy can score from anywhere on the floor, but he's also a solid passer and playmaker. So it's not like they'd have to make catastrophic changes to what they've been doing with that first unit if he were to slot into the first unit and honestly because he hasn't played yet in the first five games it wouldn't surprise me if they decided to bring him off the bench so Kerr's gonna have to tinker with the lineups a little bit but to me if he's ready to go he has to be able to go for Team USA I don't know what they would be saving him for they have their toughest matchup in their entire group right off the bat against Serbia against Nikola Jokic Bogdan Bogdanovic um, Nikola Jovic, you know, this is a deep team. One of the teams that, in my opinion, has one of the best chances to knock off Team USA and have a potential chance to win gold. So they're going to need Kevin Durant if he's available to go. And whether that's the first unit, second unit, like you said, he's been, you know, scrimmaging. Um, he went through live scrimmages today. We saw him getting shots up after practice with Curry and Booker. He looks good. I don't know what they would be waiting for to just deploy him and say, you know, go out there and we need you right now because this is our biggest game of the group stage. Right. Do you remember when they had like uh, the game against Germany and nobody wanted the pill at the end except uh, LeBron? He's like, just all right, give me the ball. And then he's yeah. like knocking down a three. Then he had the and one and he's like and showing his muscles he's like, I'll take this thing over myself. If I don't believe for a minute that Curry's afraid to uh, shoot the last shot. But I'll tell you another guy who's not afraid to shoot. I mean, every he shoots from bed while he's sleeping is Durant. I mean, Durant, he's done this in the Olympics before, carried the USA team. If they need, like, guys, the young guys are afraid to shoot. I've been hearing that. Well, Durant's not afraid to shoot. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing is that they're putting the ball in the hands of LeBron James right now because he is willing to be that alpha dog. And there's so many different alpha dogs on this team. But when there's four future Hall of Famers on the floor and the game gets tight, they're giving the ball to the 39-year-old and getting out of the way. So... LeBron is still going to be that guy, in my opinion. But what I, what I think is unique about that situation is that LeBron always talks about it over and over and over again. He's going to make the right play at the end of games. That doesn't necessarily mean force up a bad shot or a step back or a fade away or something like that if that's not the shot that's available. He's going to drive. He's going to draw, draw three bodies. And he's going to be able to kick out to whether it's Kevin Durant, Stephen Curry. So just because the ball is in his hands doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be 
downhill to the rim for a layup the way that it was against South Sudan, the way that it was, um, you know, against Serbia in, in, in the uh, group stage. But I do feel, or sorry, Germany, not Serbia, but I do feel like Kevin Durant is another player who, to your point, if a team loads the box and decides to try and stop LeBron, Durant's a player that he can just give the ball and then everybody can get out of the way too. It just depends on how healthy he is. So Durant, the all-time leading scorer in USA basketball history, to me, is a great 1B to LeBron's 1A if LeBron is going to be that alpha dog for Team USA. So do you think that, like, because uh, I want to look at the other side of this thing. This, you talked about Jovich and, and Bogey, and, and we already know what the Joker's capable of. I got to tell you, though, like, I'm not afraid of Jovich. Um, I think he's uh, I think he's an up-and-coming player in the NBA. I think he's decent. I think when I saw him play with the Heat, you know, he's relatively sloppy sometimes with his shots. I'm not afraid of this guy in the Olympics. I am afraid of joker but and even bogey i believe i firmly believe that it's the old gino ariyama everyone's a great shooter until someone's in their face okay so i do not believe that that old man can uh light up the usa if they just defend him and stick someone in his face i don't think he's going off the one they got to worry about is is joker that's the guy, because he'll make everyone else look good, even if they suck. Uh, and he's going to get his. But if they defend these other guys that they have on Serbia, it shouldn't be a problem. I mean, th this to me is about speeding up their offense, move the ball quicker, and actually play some oniony defense. Like, have some stones and play defense, and that's how you win. Yeah, I mean, that's what the second unit has brought. Like, that's where, you know, there's all these calls for Anthony Davis to slot into the starting lineup over Joel Embiid. But in my opinion, and I felt that way after the first couple of games, because honestly, I think through and through, Anthony Davis was Team USA's best player through the five exhibition games. But I agree. I kind of shifted, I kinda I kind of shifted my stance because Bam and AD have sent away any drives, any shot attempts in the paint. They have been a brick wall back there. So to mix that up, I, I don't think Steve Kerr should break that second unit up. They are playing lockdown defense. Tatum can defend. A Anthony Edwards can defend. In that last game, he actually subbed out Tyrese Halliburton and gave Derek White his minutes, and Derek White can defend. So that's a second unit that you're talking about having the stones to lock in and play some defense. That's a second unit that can do that. And then if Kevin Durant ends up in the starting lineup, and let's say Drew Holiday happens to go to that second unit, we're talking about a team that is going to lock down anybody that the, any other country can put on <laughs> automatic. The so, so, you know, you talk about Bogdanovich, like he's a, he's a scary scorer, but it, he's not an unstoppable scorer. And Jokic right. is obviously the player that they have to worry about, but I really like how they defended him in the exhibition game where they would have AD guard him straight up and then have Bam Adebayo help side. Anytime that Jokic tried to, you know, play bully ball and with those two guys, those are two of the best, uh, interior defenders in the NBA. And then sometimes they would switch off. They would have Bam play him straight up and have a AD help off in same deal. So, you know, that's a second unit that if they really need to dig in and get a stop, that's the front court that I'm putting out there. It doesn't, Joel Embiid, great offensive talent. He's struggling to find his role on this team. But those two in the front court together, that is Team USA's key to victory, in my opinion. Respectfully, I got about 45 seconds. How well do you think Tatum can play in this Olympics? after what he just did to win the uh, the first ring for himself. I thought he was phenomenal carrying the Celtics. I thought Brown was as well, but he's not on this team. Yeah, I think Jason Tatum is someone who that actually was kind of a, a um, you know, it led into what his role is going to be with Team USA. He's going to be asked to defend. He's going to be asked to play make. He's not going to get 20 shots a game the way that he does with the Celtics, but there are going to be some games that he's going to have to get a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. He was the player that closed out that gold medal match against uh, in Tokyo in 2020 against France. So he's going to have those moments offensively, but look for him to be a, a solid defender and a playmaker for this team.